The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations Astoria Fire on your new apparatus, job number 29816. Please utilize this job number when referencing your vehicle with Hughes Fire Equipment or Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your apparatus. Starting with the front bumper, passenger side on the face of the bumper is an electronic PA siren. In addition, you have mounted on the front equally distanced is two air horns. You can see your apparatus number in the middle and moving to the driver's side, this is your mechanical siren. Moving up to the headlight cluster, on the outer edge, this is gonna be a marker light. In addition, inside of that is a turn signal, and moving to the inside of that to the cluster of headlights, this is your low beam, and inside of that, the high beam. Moving up, you have an emergency or warning light on the front, and moving all the way up to the very top to the brow, there are marker lights across, or running lights. Moving to the very center, you have a forward-facing center-mounted floodlight. Moving to the outer edge above the right and left-hand side, there are your warning lights. And moving just inside over the operator's head, this is going to be your Opticom. This is a close-up of the very top of the apparatus. And we'll take a look once again at the very bumper section of the apparatus, and you can also see the headlights and emergency warning lights just above on the right and on the left hand side. This is your yellow front marker light in addition with your turn signal indicator. Looking at the side both right and left of the bumper there are two bumper mounted side facing emergency warning lights. Looking on the passenger and driver side, this is going to be mounted on the front section of the bumper in a warning light. Looking underneath, you can see you have two closed tow hooks or attachment points. Moving just to the very top of your bumper, this is going to be a storage location for hose and just inside the storage location is a swivel inch and a half discharge port. General view from the operator side, we'll start down in the left hand corner. In this section, this is the step. Moving inside, this is your shoreline inlet to 20 amp. In addition with you have an air inlet on the right hand side. On the operator and passenger side, just above the cab, there is a right and left warning light. Moving to the back section of the cab, this is a tank level indicator for visual. Moving down to the wheel, this is going to be a visual indicator for your fluid within the hub. Underneath, on both right and left, you have perimeter lights. Looking at the back section here, just where the pump is located, we'll talk a little bit about the components here. There is also an adjustable or telescoping floodlight facing left and right on the passenger and driver side. Just inside this compartment door is the activation switch for this centralized location driver side floodlight. There is also an indicator light that indicates that it's in the on position. Looking in the left, you have a variety of different compartments. We'll talk about behind those compartments here next. On the left hand side, you have long or board storage in this location. On the right hand side, just beneath that, there are two locations for removable speed lays. At the very bottom, we'll start with the pump panel on the left. This is going to be a discharge port. On the very bottom section of this location is a discharge port also. These are both two and a halfs and they're clearly marked and color coded. In the very center, this is your large diameter intake. This is going to be an override for the large diameter intake. As you can see at the very bottom, this is the drain for that intake. And just beneath that, this is the section for the drains running from left to right. We'll talk a little bit more about drains in the next set of slides. Looking on the right-hand side, 
red lever. This is your foam auxiliary inlet and fill and also strainer location. You also have a pull out deck step. Once it's been moved to the outward position, provides additional space for standing. We're now looking at the driver's side. This is going to be a roll up compartment. Directly behind this roll up compartment are your pump components. We'll talk a little bit about those comp pump components here in the next set of slides. Let's start at the very top section. This is going to be an indicator light telling you that your pump has been engaged properly if the light is illuminated. On the left hand side there is a warning label indicating information and seeking information of the owner's manual. Just beneath that this is your minimum operation maintenance schedule. Also gives you pump pressures. On the very right hand side this is your foam level indicator for class A foam. Moving just to the right this is the master intake. Just to the right of that is going to be your master discharge. And between the two of the master intake and discharge port, you'll see some test gauge ports below that have uh, two ports for testing of your pump pressures. Moving to the far right hand side, this is your PCM fault indicator. As we look at the very top, there is an amber indicator light and just beneath that an audible. Moving to the upper left hand corner, this is going to be your front discharge. Moving to the right, this is a number one cross lay. They are also color coded across referencing the color of the valve located to the discharge port. This is your number two cross lay. And moving to the right is the two and a half inch cross lay. You can see all of these are compatible with water and foam. Moving to the right hand side, this is your Husky Foam System Specification Information Sheet. And moving to the very top, this is the Husky System and we'll have more slides for that pertaining its operation. Moving to the right hand side is your Pierce Information Center regarding water level. This is also the throttle control and silence and menus for that operation. Moving to the left hand side at the very bottom, the black knob is going to be an increase decrease for intake pressure. This is going to be a gauge referencing that intake. Starting at the very top here, this is your Husky foam system operating instructions. This is where you turn on and off the foam system increase and decrease foam percentages. Moving to the right of that, this is your Pierce information and throttle control. This information is for your engine RPMs in addition with a water tank indicator and throttle just beneath that. As we move to the left hand side of the panel, on the left side there is a group of rocker switches. We'll talk about those in just a moment. This is going to be for your passenger and driver side intake. Those are the switches associated with it and an indicator light with them. This is your recirculating line. These are the two large diameter intakes and they are electronic valves. They are color coded to the discharge for each of those. Moving to the right hand side, this is going to be a large diameter discharge. Moving to the very right hand side for your aerial, this is moving to the right hand side, this is your pump uh, primer. And moving down to the left, this is your tank fill. And moving just to the right, this is your tank to pump. Let's go ahead and look down at the lower section of the pump panel. Starting down in the lower left hand corner, these are the two uh, passenger and driver side inlet discharge drains. Moving to the right, you have a number one cross lay, number two cross lay, the two and a half inch cross lay, your aerial drain, manifold drain in addition with your foam auxiliary drain and at the very top a primer drain. We'll also talk about the uh, door to the right hand side. Just behind the access door located here in the image this is going to be your uh, foam lever for filling your foam tank. In addition just below that uh, you can see a warning light in addition to a covered rocker switch. This is your manual pump shift override. Let's talk a little bit about those switches that we saw on the left hand side. Starting at the top, this is going to be your driver rear flood, passenger rear flood, the rear flood, in addition with an open and closed indicator, the aerial shutoff, and the generator aerial on off switch. Moving upward to the location uh, at the very top, there is a compartment which houses your breaker box. Uh, inside the breaker box location is also location for your generator module. Uh, this will give you information on the amps for lines one and two in addition with your AC volts. Uh, just to the right of that once again is the breaker box. 
but uh, more importantly on that breaker box are some warning labels in addition with a Pierce information label moving to the door of that same uh, location this is going to be the G1 for generator one panel uh, this is the panel bus information for each of those breakers just above that location this is directly over your outrigger um, this is the light for that outrigger for indicating its location down to the very bottom we have folding wheel chocks looking just inside the compartment to the uh, just to the rear of that you have two adjustable shelves in addition with a electrical reel just to the right of that electrical reel is your push for rewinding that reel and just down from that there is an electrical plug on the side and that is a 15 amp shoreline outlet plug this is going to be a view of the very bottom of the shelf moving just to the rear of this compartment is where you'll find your diesel exhaust access point for DEF this is a 4.5 gallon tank moving to the horizontal compartment this is for tool storage both of these will move out and swing in an outward position for access to tools on both front and back of this uh, toolbar uh, just beneath that location you have three spots for bottle storage moving to the rear of the apparatus um, you can see just a generalized view but let's go ahead and take a look in the upper left hand corner this is going to be a fixed floodlight just beneath that fixed floodlight this is going to be an additional storage location just beneath this location this is your access point for your diesel fuel this is low uh, sulfur diesel moving just to the right of that this is going to be the rear compartment as you can see there are two adjustable shelves and at the very bottom a pullout shelf just beneath this location in the very rear section of the wheels you're going to find uh, your plates for your stabilizer pads moving to the very rear section you'll find work lights in addition with an inclinometer and a folding or pull out ladder this is it in the open position or access position let's look just up above at the rear section of the stabilizers the stablers have a warning light on them but just above that I'd like to point out this is the location of an additional light for the rear section of the rear stabilizers generalized view of the very top of the rear of the apparatus and we'll talk a little bit about more of that next let's start down in the left hand corner as we look you have a tail cluster which houses a reverse turn brake and a uh, warning lights moving just uh, to the right of that this is going to be your large diameter intake large diameter intake gauge in addition with an access point but just above the tail lights you're going to find the deck light switch as we move to uh, compartments you have compartments on both left hand sides these are accessible from the top also this is an access door which allows you access for hose storage just beneath that location uh, next to your work light by the aerial inlet is an additional compartment door once this door is open this is going to be your uh, aerial stabilizer uh, control center this is for the left hand side of the vehicle you also have on the right and left an attachment point or tow hook that's closed and also the aerial drain as we move to the center of uh, the apparatus uh, you're going to find an additional uh, drop down access door this is the location of all of your overrides for your aerial in addition with overrides for the stabilizers look look up from that location as we look into that this is the compartment storage for your ladders um, you also have additional long pike pole storage in the very center in addition with a folding ladder let's talk a little bit about what types of ladders you have and their links within those 
These are all going to be aluminum ladders. There is a 35 foot two section, a 16 foot single roof, and a 28 foot two, two section uh, extension ladder. Um, just to the uh, left hand side, uh, you're going to find some additional placard indicating that you also have a 35 foot two section, a 10 foot folding, and a 12 foot two section extension ladder. Located in the center of this compartment, you'll find long tool storage. These are your pike pools starting at the very top, the six foot pike pole moving all the way down to a 12 foot. Just to the right hand side of that same location there, just as it is on the left hand side, this is an access door for hose storage. It also has access from the very top for the uh, loading and unloading of large diameter hose. Let's move down just from uh, the location you're seeing now. Uh, this is going to be the access door for your stabilizers. As you can see in the upper left hand corner, this is the high idle on off. To the right, your emergency hydraulic power in addition with front and rear stabilizer controls. As we move to the very bottom just above the bumper, this is going to be a 120 VAC 20 amp outlet. Generalized view of the rear of the apparatus on the lower section. We're now going to take a look at a little bit more of the details within the upper section of this portion of the apparatus. Looking at the very top, you have uh, right and left warning lights in the back. In addition, just next to that, you have a rear facing adjustable uh, flood spot. In the rear section, you also have, uh, you can see the white square box. This is going to be your reverse or backup camera. Just above that, you have some marker lights, and above that, you have a fixed floodlight rear facing. As a generalized view of the uh, passenger side and rear section, uh, let's take a look at a little bit more of those details uh, in the next set of the compartments. As we look at the ladder, this is the de uh, detent lever that allows you to uh, release and store the ladder in its position and also allow it to be withdrawn from its side of the apparatus to be uh, utilized. We're back now at the very top of the pedestal. Uh, underneath these um, box here, uh, as you lift the lid, this is the location you're going to find the controls and informa information regarding the usage of the area ladder. Let's take a look inside here. On the left-hand side, I would like you to familiarize yourself with the warning and dangerous hazard levels. In addition with these labels, there are labels on the left-hand side which indicate uh, your load capacities while uh, there is no water flowing in addition with while water flowing and different extension levels. In the center of this uh, section you have a compartment door. This is the step off of the ladder onto the uh, pedestal. This uh, opens up and it provides you additional storage location. Generalized view from the rear of the apparatus looking forward down the ladder. We'll talk a little bit about some of the components within the ladder. You have two fold down steps on the very uh, top fly. This is an image of them in the downward position. There is also on the driver side of the apparatus, there is a 16 foot roof ladder. There are also floodlights on the end of that for uh, pointing toward the tip of the ladder. Generalized view of the left hand side of the apparatus or driver's side. You can see on the right there is a fixed mounted pike pole. There is also a long storage compartment on the main fly of the ladder. These are the uh, directional lights which point toward the tip of the ladder. You can also see that there is uh, the compartment and just beneath this the foam uh, tank fill for your Class A foam. We have a couple more pictures of that too. Let's take a look on the right hand side the yellow handled pike pole which is mounted on the uh, final or last section of the fly. Uh, there is also a velcro strap. Uh, to prevent the uh, ladder that's currently stowed in this position from being uh, pulled out. This is going to be the very tip of your ladder. You can see in the very center is a pinnable waterway. 
In addition, let's talk a little bit about some of those components. At the very top, you have a, you have a tip lights, uh, which is a control switch on the left-hand side of the ladder. Moving also to the very front, this is the control for your master stream device. In addition, with the bright silver in the center, that is the removal of your nozzle. On the right-hand side, there is a speaker in addition with a power outlet. And as we move just to the very front of that location, you'll see the lights on the front of the tip of the ladder, and you'll see the lights on the very bottom section. Those are mounted on the cab and are your warning lights. As you can see on the very front, the red section of the ladder is a detachable section of your fly. Looking just beneath that section, this is that area where the foam tank is for level A foam, and this is also location of your water fill for the main water tank. Moving underneath, this is going to be your generator uh, hydraulic power, in addition with two fill locations for hydraulic fluid. Generalized view of the passenger side of the vehicle, and we're now going to move down that passenger side and review some of those compartments. Just underneath, these are going to be your front and rear right-sided stabilizer pads. Moving just underneath this section of this uh, truck, you'll see that there are perimeter lights. Uh, this is where the steps are located on the rear section of the apparatus. Let's go ahead and take a look inside this left rear compartment just next to the stabilizer. Inside that compartment, you'll find a adjustable shelves in addition with a pullout shelf and also a 15 amp shore power outlet on the inside of the left side of that compartment. I have an image of that in the next few uh, pictures here shortly. There's your shoreline outlet, 15 amp. This is looking at that small compartment just over that uh, location that we just were at on the opposite side. It mirrors the same as the uh, driver's side. And same goes on this side. This mirrors the opposite on the uh, driver's side. You can see this is your bottle storage location. Underneath that, a warning light. Let's open the compartment door. Um, the bottle storage location has additional uh, webbing inside, which allows that uh, to be uh, wrapped around the bottle. So while in movement, it does not shift or fall out. This is that fixed mounted uh, Passenger side scene, floodlight. This is going to be your horizontal compartment. Uh, inside that horizontal compartment, there is additional storage uh, and have the ability for adjustable shelves. Let's go ahead and move uh, just forward of this location, uh, just to the uh, long vertical door here. Uh, just beneath that location is your exhaust. Also, just beneath the marker light, there is a warning for hot or extreme exhaust temperatures. Be cautious when parked next to combustibles. Uh, as you move forward to that location, uh, you'll see this is location for your uh, wheel chocks. These are the folding wheel chocks for the passenger side of the vehicle. Let's go ahead and take a look inside that compartment, uh, which is the uh, vertical compartment above the exhaust. There are two folding shelves in addition with a pull-out shelf in the very bottom. Looking overhead once again, same uh, configuration as the driver's side. At the very top, this is your stabilizer light. Uh, just beneath that, this is going to be the compartment which houses uh, just storage in this location. There is not an additional breaker box in this location, just an empty storage compartment. Uh, let's go ahead and move down from that location. As you can see, there is an additional forward uh, of the front stabilizer, a vertical compartment. Uh, in that vertical compartment here, you have two additional shelves. At the very top, you have a pull out and pull down shelf. There's also some switches at the top. Um, or not switches, I'm sorry, plugs at the top, which are once again a 15 amp shore power. Uh, moving just to the right of that side is where you'll see that uh, shore power switch here, a little on the uh, out of focus, but uh, that's a 15 amp uh, shore power. Just beneath that, this is going to be your cab lift. Uh, simply activate the switch, select the lever to the position you'd like. Generalized view of the midsection of your apparatus. Let's go ahead and move to the very top of uh, this portion you're going to find the uh, floodlight. This mirrors the driver's side. Uh, just inside uh, the red compartment door here is an access door. 
Uh, that access door allows you to gain access to the controls uh, on off switch in addition to operate uh, lift or retract uh, that light. Um, as you can see there's also the indicator light uh, and the toggle switch. Uh, just behind this location this is the access to that uh, through compartment uh, to the opposite side for maybe board storage or additional hose. Just to the rear section of that this is going to be a speed load location. This is removable by pushing that uh, lever there above or below the yellow uh, indication and removing that tray. Just beneath that there is two additional uh, cross lays here uh, indicated in the red and the blue. Let's start at the very top. This is an override. Moving down from that location, large diameter intake. Moving down from that location uh, to the uh, two and a half inch auxiliary inlet. Let's go ahead and move just forward of those locations. You can see on the right hand side, this is a two and a half inch intake. This is the override for that intake. This is going to be the override in green for your large diameter discharge. Down at the very bottom, these are going to be your drain valves for the various uh, discharge uh, ports and intakes. Moving to your left, uh, there is an uh, opening here that says do not cap. This is your relief valve discharge. Close up of the uh, override. In addition with uh, at the very bottom in the green, this is for your large diameter passenger uh, discharge. This is the override location which requires the tool to operate the, the valve generalized view of the front section of the passenger cab. Let's go ahead and take a look at the very top of the cab. This is your illuminating light for visual uh, appearance of your tank to indicate water level. Moving just forward of that location, this is going to be a warning light on the uh, cab. Moving up to the very front section of the cab, you can see the side warning lights in addition with the uh, front warning light. As we move uh, just down from this location, you can see this is the air intake for the engine. This is also equipped with TAC4 suspension. You can see the sticker on the right hand side there. Generalized view of the uh, passenger side of the vehicle. And now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the components with inside your apparatus. Starting on the driver's section. Uh, you'll see warning labels on the driver's section. As a matter of fact, on all doors there is additional warning labels. As you move forward into the cab, this is going to be your uh, charging system indicator once it is plugged into shore power. Let's go ahead and move now to the uh, driver's seat. Uh, there are some warning labels here in addition with your uh, UL inspection. Uh, let's pay close attention here to the right hand side yellow sticker. Uh, this is going to be your Pierce manufacturing label. This is indication for when the apparatus was manufactured. It also has information of what your job number was for that uh, piece of equipment. There is also gross vehicle weight ratings. This is your VIN number, which is also located on the A pillar. And just beneath that, this is the section that helps you understand what fluid capacities are in your vehicle and what those types are. Looking at the pedal section of the front of the operator, left hand side, this is going to be diagnostic and service. These are the uh, informational ports for engine and ABS diagnostics. But let's look up to the red switch. This is the quarter turn battery switch. This is your master battery switch. Once that is on, provides power to your entire vehicle. Let's go ahead and look up from that uh, battery switch to the subsection of switches on that uh, left hand side. First, you have a stationary OK pump while rolling. These are indicator. You have a water pump switch and a foam pump switch. On the left, you have your ignition, start, and warning or hazard lights for your flashers. Also, your emergency master to the right of that headlights on and off, and a panel rocker dimmer switch. General uh, view here of the dash, starting in the left, your trans temp, oil, pressure, DEF level, water temperature. Moving across, you have your tachometer and speedometer. Moving further across, you have your volts, fuel tank level, in addition with front and rear air. At the very top of this, there is an informational guide that illuminates at startup. In addition with at the very bottom section, there is also a illuminating guide area for information about your apparatus. Moving to the right, about knee high on the right hand side, this is in high idle OK indicator and the high idle switch. Moving down from that, this is what's going to interlock your differential for your rear axle. When it's engaged, the light is illuminated. Above that, this is your main parking system brake, uh, pull to apply, push to release. Generalized view of the center of the cab from the operator's position. We'll go through these components here next. Starting in the upper left, 
this is going to be your uh, rear camera uh, visual area. Um, this is where you would see or view the uh, rear section of your camera. Moving just to the right of that, at the very top, this is going to be your climate control uh, for the entire cab. Let's go ahead and uh, zone in a little bit on that. You have your heat and uh, defrost uh, in the gray areas, which controls the fan. You also have heat in the red section and blue for air conditioning. Just uh, beneath that, you have your uh, retarder on and off. Uh, you also have the auto apply for your retarder, traction, and mirror heat. This is going to be your Allison transmission. You can see the indication level here of pumping in neutral and some also caution labels just above that. Uh, these are going to be the mirror uh, controls for the flat and for the convex. Moving just to the right of that in the center, you'll see the, you can see that this is the pump pressure. Uh, this is a digital readout for that. And at the very right, uh, this is your electronic siren. Moving overhead in the uh, cab, looking from the operator seat, you can see that there are the white and red push-on, push-off lights. But let's get started over the head of the operator. On the left-hand side of that, you'll see the yellow placard. Let's talk a little bit about the yellow placard. Coming from the manufacturer, the height is 11 feet 10. Length 4110 and your gross vehicle weight rating 36 tons. This also has at the very bottom of this your job number and referencing that also. Just uh, to the right of that in the center flat section, this is a very focused uh, downward light uh, with an on-off switch. The same light applies on the passenger seat and I have that in the next set of slides. Let's start with the rocker switches across the top or push-on switches. Emergency master, roof light, front warning, side warning, lower rear warning, upper rear warning, your Opticom, and you can see a blank for a future uh, switch. This is also a location for your perimeter, electric siren here, uh, mechanical siren, siren brake indicator, front rear passenger side floods. Moving over to the next is your aerial master, aerial PTO generator, uh, stabilizer locator light, uh, the trip flood, deck lights, and load manager. Just above in the very center of your apparatus, there is a red switch or a red light that will activate when you have a compartment door open. Moving forward of that, this is going to be your information for seat belts. Uh, this will indicate a pressure sensitive switch in the seats indicating that your uh, seat has been occupied and when the belt is actually plugged it will indicate green. Looking from the front to the rear of the cab, you're going to find two SCBA forward facing seats and in the very center a roll up compartment. Looking from the exterior, you'll find those warning stickers on each one of the doors on the left hand side. Roll up windows, door latch in red, and a pull handle. Let's go ahead and look further inside the cab. There are two rear facing SCBA seats here. You also have next to the storage compartment two forward facing SCBA seats. Uh, you can also see the red seat belt uh, here on the uh, far right hand side uh, for visual effect. Uh, located in the center between the rear facing seats is an access door. That access door, once in the open position, will give you access to uh, checking for fluids for the engine oil in addition with your transmission and just a visual observation point looking in without tilting the cab. Looking back from this location uh, toward that rear storage location, you can see on both right and left hand sides uh, there are uh, fold down uh, SCBA seats. In the center with the roll-up door open, you can see at the very top the two yellow. Those are for your 12-volt uh, uh, termination blocks. Just in the very lower section here of that adjustable shelf, this is your shore power outlet, which is a 15-amp outlet. Let's take a look from the passenger side looking in. On the right, on the door panel itself, there are warning labels uh, for uh, the uh, operator within that section. Also, forward-facing, this is going to be the location for the fill of your windshield wiper. Just looking above that location, your vehicle is equipped with an SRS uh, airbag restraint system. Just above that location, you have a small glove box and a pull handle. There is also, just to the left of that, going to be shore power. Once again, 15 amp, two plugs, both on the right and left hand side of the uh, doghouse location. Looking in general from the passenger seat forward, you can see you have a handheld spotlight. Looking just to the left hand side, you have two 12 volt plugins in addition with uh, USB style uh, plugins and just moving from that the vehicle data recorder. Looking overhead, once again push on off wet and right, red and white lights in addition with two ropes for your lanyards regarding for your air horns. 
in the center cab section. This is also location of the PA, some future locations for additional components, but at the very top, this is your Siren Code 3 device. Just overhead of the passenger, this is going to be a focused downward spotlight. And looking over the passenger's head, this is going to be a panel of rocker switches. And you can see to the left, there is additional components for future uh, space. Uh, but let's look at this panel. You have your electric siren activate, your mechanical siren activate. You have a siren brake and a front flood, in addition with four future switches. This is going to take us to the very end, Astoria Fire. Congratulations on your new apparatus. If you have any questions regarding the content of this video, please contact your sales representative from Hughes Fire Equipment. Thank you.